Hi everyone, Jenny Smith here with the Influential Women Podcast. I have the honor of having Miss Mia Gilbertson in the house. Welcome, Mia. Thank you. I'm so honored that you asked me to be part of your podcast. Oh, I'm so excited. You know, um, here at Wake Up, you know, Mia is a, a big, big part of the foundation of Wake Up. And what we call her around here is Mama Mia. <laughs> Who gave you that nickname? Uh, is it Matt? It had to be Matt. Well, no, actually... It might have been you. I think you started it. Mm. Mm. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about yourself. Uh, that's a really good question. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, like, if we were to go back from the very beginning, I've always been, like, star student, follow the, you know, I'm a rule follower. That's probably where it's like, man, just, like, chill out a little bit, right? So I'm, like, I'm pretty much, like, a straight shooter. That's how my parents raised me. And then the craziest thing I've ever done is drop out of school to work for Wake Up Pueblo, the, the Smiths. For their multiple uh, business ventures, and I think from there it's just kind of evolved into filling, it, like figuring out how I can fill gaps mm-hmm. and figuring out um, even my like. There's been a whole lot of like introspection in terms of what's my ego because I have a pretty big ego, and I've learned that uh, through working here. But yeah, it's that's kind of what that's what I do. So tell me a little bit about the journey and how you know you're at Wake Up now. But where did it all start? Because it started about a year ago now, right? Yeah. So I met you a year ago um, uh-huh. in COVID, you know, when people were not hiring, but we needed some marketing help with um, snooze. And uh, my husband goes, you are going to love who we just hired. I'm like, tell me about her. He goes, I can't even tell you about her because she's just your cup of tea and you're going to love her. And I met you and I'm like, this girl, she's amazing. So anyways, yeah. OK, you tell me. <laughs> That's so sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I was going to school, COVID hits, everything shuts down. And actually I was in a really dark place, like probably the darkest I've ever been, where it's just like um, probably a lot of personal things, like insecurities that I had to work through. And then when school was taken away and when like there was no more like social interaction, it was like, all you have to focus on is yourself. And so that's where I was at. And then I kind of finally started like working through some of those issues. And as I'm kind of stabilizing, that's when Meredith Moose Mm -hmm. uh, reaches out and she's like, hey, I've got a job opportunity. And I honestly didn't ask enough questions. I just said, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, I'm not doing anything else. Everything else is shut down. I might as well go in for an interview just to see where it goes. And then from there, um, I walked into the interview thinking it was just for Snap Fitness. You know, I could do some videos of people working out. That's easy. But then I realized, and Matt has this thing, every time you step in an interview with him and he likes you, he starts selling you on the job. He sells you on the opportunity. And he tells you, like, all his big, like, he's like the, the villain, well, the superhero that tells you his master plan. He's like... I'm going to build a a national company. We're going to sell a mattress in a box that's going to compete with Purple Mattress. And then we're going to go like national franchises for the brick and mortar. (laughs) And it's like, you're sitting there and like, I'm like a... You're like, "Uh uh-huh. I'm a college kid. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm sitting there like, what is going on? And then um, I think I walked into the interview not necessarily needing or wanting the job. More like, oh, I'll just see where this goes. And then I walked out wanting, like, I want this job. This is the job that I want. So um, Matt sold you. <laughs> you didn't sell him, but he sold you. He well, I think I sold him too. But yeah, yeah. yeah you know what? Sold. I think he did that in our marriage too, right? He <laughs> sold me on himself. Yeah, he does that, and he has a he has a charisma about him. Like I told him, I think two months into working with him, I was like, you know, you'd make a really great cult leader. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he would, he would. But basically, I, I started making videos, and I think he liked me a lot, so I got hired probably within the next couple days, mm-hmm. and uh, so did Paige Schemenauer. Mm-hmm. I love and Paige. I know. And from that, what came out of the job that I did not plan for was like this beautiful relationship and friendship between me, Paige, and Meredith. Um, I called them the three marketeers. Yes, the three marketeers. Love them. I know. And I think a lot of my identity actually centered around uh, the three of us, right? And like Mm -hmm. the the work that we were not doing for Matt Smith. And then um, things got really crazy when uh, Lewis Curtis shows up in a film crew. Actually, I heard whispers about it. Because I got hired in the phase where he pulled out because of COVID-19. Right. So he was here. We didn't know he was com- going to come back or not. Yeah. And so I didn't hear much about him. Like, I heard, like, these, like, legends of a, a large film crew and this crazy guy named Lewis Curtis. And uh, I met him for the first time in, a, in Snap Fitness's, I think, like, cardio room. room. Oh, cardio yeah, room. Yeah, 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 cardio room. And I was like, who is this guy? And I had, like, huge, high skepticism. I was like, I don't trust this guy. I don't know what's going on. But Matt was like, I know something special is happening. Just go along with it. Just stop researching. And the more he said stop researching, the more I researched. But anyhow. Um, so what kind of research <laughs> did you di- do? Just a lot of Googling. I was like, okay, mm-hmm. Lewis Curtis, Curtis Lewis. And, and you I found some, nothing. I found nothing. <laughs> yeah, I found nothing. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I, and then from there, it just kind of blossomed into Wake Up Pueblo. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I jumped in a lot of different positions from beginning to start. So first it was videographer, then it was kind of like production. Not really, well, it was more like uh, systems manager for production, trying mm-hmm. to figure out what's the back end of deliverables. And then kind of pulling away from production entirely, focusing, okay, what's the market focus? How can we hit market metrics? And uh, now I'm kind of, I'm where I am. Now so. you're the director of strategy, right? Yeah, the Strate- DOS. The DOS. And yeah. how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? I'm 21 years old. She's 21, y'all. And she is a badass. 21, dropped out of school, which you had a full ride scholarship, right? I did have a full ride. And you left. Yeah. And or I, you haven't gone back. I haven't. Because you said at the beginning, you know, I think I'll take off a semester or, or a year and just see how it goes. Correct. And where are you at now? You know, that's that's a good question. Um, I think, I don't, I think I, I'm, a, I'm the kind of person that likes like, uh, all my water in one basket or all my eggs in one basket. You know what I mean? I like a full cup. Mm-hmm. I don't want two empty or two half empty cups. I want mm-hmm. two, one full cup. And uh, I think where I'm at is um, I want all my energy where I think I can make the most impact. And I think right mm-hmm. now that's Wake Up Pueblo. Um, I don't think that's going to change. But if that were yes. ever to, like, I'm not I'm not opposed to going back to school. But mm-hmm. I think that the amount of experience that I'm getting, um, not only in marketing, but also in like um, personal relations, like, uh, people, leadership, there's so much there that I never would have expected. I mean, mm-hmm. like, for example, in leadership, like, I was in a, like, a leadership minor, uh, president's leadership program for CC Pueblo. And the one thing that I did not predict when it came down to leadership was how do you delegate and how do you not have all the answers? Because you might have all the answers, but to, to lead without giving the answers and just to ask more questions, like, that's the hardest part. Because even in leadership programs or you can try to simulate leadership. What that looks like is saying, okay, how do you solve this problem? How do you solve this leadership problem? And everything's centered around you solving a problem. Whereas what leadership really should be and what I'm struggling with is to just like set back, pretend like I don't have the answers and let someone else come up with the answers because And it's okay them. to yeah. not have the answers. I 100%. always think it's better to not have the answer and find the correct one rather than, you know, wiggle your way through an answer that really isn't, you know, the best answer that you could have given. It's okay to say, I don't know. I completely agree. And you're learning that. So you don't know if you're going to go back to school. Well, you know, I do feel like if any year you're going to drop out on a full ride scholarship, might as well be the COVID year because you didn't really get the college, you know, experience either. And the experience you're getting here at Wake Up, I just want to stop and say cheers to you because, Mia, you have just grown into this young woman. I mean, from a year ago, this your cute little... (laughs) college girl coming in taking videos you know very creative to now like the mastermind of wake up and all the strategies that go behind our clients client stuff and you're always learning you're always reading you're always growing i am so proud of you and i'm not even your mother but i feel like a second mom oh you're definitely my second mom yes yeah 100 percent. 100 percent. and i think um what i learned a lot too about um i think it's like i felt like this was my second family like mm-hmm. I felt like uh, I didn't have a lot of like close relationships because I was like, I think like I was very introverted and like. Which is so hard <laughs> for me to see you as introverted because you're not around here. Yeah. You're almost like home here. Well, no, it's so funny too. I mean, I feel like I can like, I can, I can assert myself. I have confidence that I never have outside of this place. Like the minute you put mm-hmm. me in front of other people I don't know, like you can put me in front of a CEO, you can put me in front of Matt Smith, you can put me in front of mm-hmm. Eric and I'd be fine. The minute you put me back in like a high school classroom, I'll be like, hi guys, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what to do here. So yeah. would you say that's, you know, one of the bad things about you is that you're kind of introverted, but then too, it's, you're not. Yeah, yeah. Not bad things, but you know, we all have our it's, weaknesses. Yeah, it's definitely a weakness. And mm-hmm. I think my major goal has been like, just to to stop caring so much, to stop like um, trying to read people, stop trying to strategize in my head because like, that's what makes me good at my job is the strategy part. Mm-hmm. But then even in like interpersonal connections and like relationships, I'm doing that in my head, which totally like puts a wall, you know right. what I mean? So you're, you're trying to learn that balance? Yeah. What are you doing to try learning that balance? Are you learning by mistakes? <laughs> or are you, I mean, wh- what are you doing for that? That's a really good question. Um, I think I'm just trying to be kinder to myself. You know, like Aww. that's that's what, um, at least like Eric Thompson has given me a lot mm-hmm. of that advice. He's like, just stop. Because like, he'll be like, hey, how do you think this week went? And I'll be like, oh yeah, this went really well, but I think I should have done this. I should have done this. I failed at this. And he's like, just just like stop ridiculing yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think what keeps me away from being social in front of other people is me wondering, oh, what if I uh, embar- embarrass myself? What if I say this incorrectly? Or what if um, I'm not, my, mu- my music taste doesn't match their music taste? Or what if- Oh my know, gosh, I've never even 
thought about that stuff. <laughs> oh, like I would say screw them if they don't like country music <laughs> or, you know, the 80s and oh, 90s. Man. If I'm in a car, if I'm in a car ride, I will never play my own music. I'll give ox to somebody else because I don't want the pressure of having to choose music that other people enjoy. Like, oh. <laughs> but see, why do you even care? Like, it's kind of like mm-hmm. just play the radio and figure it out where y'all get, a, you know, have in common. Yeah, it should be. You're so she is so sweet. (laughs) And you know, I think she said it well, like you need to be kinder to yourself. And I not even for just women. I you Mm. know, everybody, I feel like we are our own worst enemies a lot of the time. And if we could just give ourselves a little grace and just be kinder to starting with ourselves, not anybody else, but to ourselves, how much more better would we feel? How much more accomplished? Exactly. And it's really like I think um when when I think of because of when I think of my social anxiety, and I'm sure this is for other women or you just people in general as well, it's not other people being like harsh on you or even judging you. Like we almost assume other people are judging us because of how harsh we are on ourselves. Mm-hmm. So I think, yeah, kind of making those connections with other people is first starting with yourself saying, I don't judge myself, neither will I. <laughs> I don't judge myself and no one else will either because, um, I'm just harder than on myself than anyone else will. It's kind of like, it's that spotlight mm-hmm. effect. Spotlight effect. Spotlight. Yeah, it's called the spotlight effect in um, psychology. Miss Mama Mia, what yes. are your best qualities? Ooh. Um. <laughs> uh, I think I'm very observational. So like I can tell when um, I mean it's again it's part of that over analysis, but mm-hmm. I can tell when someone else is upset. And so like, I'm like heavily affected when I can tell either my mom or my coworker is not doing so hot. And I think um, in one way, obviously you gotta set your boundaries and I'm still learning to do that. But being able to notice when other people are affected by something allows me to like gauge a situation and support where support is needed. Um, The other part is, oh man, this is hard. This is the hardest question, right? This this is about being kind to yourself. I don't know. What do you think my best qualities are? <laughs> oh, man. No, see, this is part yeah. of it. You being kind to yourself. So I want to hear you say uh, what, what are your best qualities? Yeah, because it's call. good. It's good to stop and reflect. Like, how would somebody describe me in three words? Oh, my gosh. You would be. No, 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 no not me. You. <laughs> oh, I had so many words. I had good words for you. OK, three words. OK, I would say um, this is your podcast, not mine. <laughs> I just got to sit here and drink wine with you. It's a good time for me. I know. I got to catch up. Okay. So I would say um, empathetic, analytical, and um, optimistic. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Um, you know, you're on the Influential Women podcast, which I'm so excited to have you here. And and we, we're just taking a break from work and really coming to my office, which is still fun. Yes. But who has been an influential woman in your life? Hmm. I think, I mean, like, this is, like, the easy answer, right? So I've probably got two. So one of them, okay. like, when I think of my mom. I love your mom. I know. So, but it's it's actually more of, like, a roundabout way. Because my mom, um, she's much like myself, very hard on herself. But what she sees is that, you know, she's given everything to her family. She's been a stay-at-home mom. So it's, like, all her priorities, all of her goals relied around, like, uh, my dad, myself, my brother. And within like the last year, year and a half or so, she started working again. So she's a seamstress for Lidoris mm-hmm. Burton. Oh, yeah. Well, I called Lidoris yesterday. I didn't get Paisley's flower girl <laughs> dress. So I'll just, yeah, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. So my mom will probably do some of those alterations. But um, I think the, the cool part is seeing her go from like at a later age in her life in a country that she's not from because she's from Japan. So oh, that's so cool. It is so cool. Do you yeah, have yeah. a lot of um, Japanese heritage things that she brings into your family? Yeah, there's a lot of, I mean, it's a lot of food, you know, a lot of oh. Asian food, but it's like, it's like not like sushi or sashimi. It's more like just really simple, like everything from like rice to the way she cooks the vegetables to the way she makes noodles. Noodles my favorite. I knew noodles were yeah, your favorite. Oh my gosh, I'll take noodles any day. Will but... you ask your mom when she's going to invite me over for dinner? Oh, I can make that happen next week. All right, perfect. All right. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> yeah, your mom. Yeah, yeah. So my mom. So seeing her come from another country, uh, halfway through her life, never really like having any priorities outside of a family in the last 20 years. Uh, hasn't had a job in this country in the last 20 years and then seeing her now like being willing to put herself out there you know get a job and then I'm seeing her go through many of the issues that I'm going through it's like man what do you do when uh, you feel like you can't hit deadlines what do you do when you're not in control of those deadlines someone else sets mm-hmm. up for you and you feel like you're overflowed and it's like seeing her like never have a superior like never having like an ego complex or feeling embarrassed that she's younger or older than me like I can talk to her about issues or give her advice and there's never like a 
um like i know like what's best because i'm older than you yeah right. it's like it's, it's she's always so open to to anything and she's willing to try new things even though it does scare her like she has the same if not worse social anxiety than i do um, i love it so do you guys come home and kind of chat about you know your work days and how they kind of relate yes yes so because i mean i started working before she did um for you guys so it actually it's only mm-hmm. been half a year that she's been working for the doris but i started working for you guys i had all these like internal struggles because i've actually never been in this, a job as serious as this and as like personal as what this. was your first job my first job i was a pool attendant <laughs> oh <laughs> you know, where at uh the walking stick pool oh yeah it was cute um but yeah so like I started working for you guys and I think there obviously the the nature of a startup means that there's not much organization. There's a lot of like pulling up from your bootstraps. There's just a lot of like stuff that, you know, you feel like in school they tell you things should be this way. In school they say businesses are run this way. Mm-hmm. And so um you come in here and you're like, is this not right? Like is there is like <laughs> is this unjust? Like almost like as if like you're judging the process. But really like the nature is is that you just have to jump in. It's not going to be perfect. There's no systems because you're creating the systems. Mm-hmm. Um, and so my mom walked in to this job kind of like thinking everything would just be like very cookie cutter, like just do this, this and this, like step A, step B, step C. But there's a lot of like, because Ladors is also building a startup. You know, she's mm-hmm. also building something new and bigger and larger than like her dreams. You know what I mean? So she's walking in being like, why is it this way? Why is it this way? Oh, I kind of want to quit today. <laughs> you know, like, I, I don't feel really like going to work today. I was like, well, like, I mean, that's just part of it. <laughs> and if it's like, if it's easy, then like, it's not a job for you because you're not growing from it. Absolutely. Yeah. So I think like my mom's my role model in the way that she takes critique and there's, it's never too late to start something new mm. um, and overcoming all your insecurities and all your doubts. I, I love, love that. Time. Yeah. I love it. So the second woman, um, I think like it, she's at a distance, but I really, really enjoy like all the women here. Um, but the one that I think that I want to take a lot from is like Erin, because she's like always behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And that takes another like that takes like a there's no I need to be seen. I'm not doing this for a camera. I'm not doing this for because um, like one of my greatest flaws when it comes to going to weaknesses is wanting ad- or wanting um Admiration validation. validation yeah validation from other people whereas like she's like totally comfortable in her skin she doesn't need anyone to know what she's doing or like what she's achieving but she is so like just like get the work done and mm-hmm. i love that and like there's no like drama or she's an yeah. amazing human she is she's like you she started you know <laughs> younger and she's still with us and you know she's grown and grown so you've seen how you know, the potential is there. So I hope mm-hmm. that you stay with us forever. Oh, dude, Me is the one she'll be like, uh, I'm leaving. I'm like, no, you're not. I'm not going to let you leave. You're at your damn mind if you're leaving. <laughs> I know. I mean, the wine's too good to leave. You right. Know? See? Yeah. Mm, so she is your second influential woman. Yeah, I think so. I and love then, that. But everyone in this building is very like every like actually no. Our, so Christina, uh, she was one of our editors. Mm-hmm. She actually said that she's never worked in a place with this much female leadership before. And she was talking about like how um, like there was no like spite, no kind of like uh, it's called actually like in psychology, men and women have two different types of um, aggression, you know, so like there's men that are obviously more physical, but then um, it's actually called relational, like relationship, relational violence or aggression with women. Hmm. And so it's because like when we get aggressive, it's like talking behind our backs, talking like it's more like... um, very strategic, sly, behind the scenes, like sabotage, mm. right? But she was like, there's none of that here. You know, like every single woman is very straightforward. Like even you, like you're very straightforward, like, hey, I need this, but it's never like, hey, to use the word, but it's like never like the B word. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's, right. it's like, and like you'll even say like, hey, I don't mean to be this way. Right. Uh, I don't want to come off this way. And you're very candid about that. And I think that's like a beautiful thing that we don't always see in female leadership mm. um, because I think sometimes women try to overcompensate you know, to, to, to get that power and that leadership, right. and that respect. But no, right. I would agree with you. Yeah. I love all the women in this building. I know. So, so what are some goals? Cause you're 21, man. You, you still got a, a lot to do in your life. What are some of Mia's goals? Ah, okay. Um, goal number one is to, to solidify like everything at Wink of Pueblo so that we are like taking on clients and like meeting all our goals is easy and done. It's like, it's like a cookie cutter system. But then also to be like to to be leaders in content marketing. So to understand and um, almost like not just follow trends and strategies for content marketing, but to create some that are groundbreaking, like to create mm. strategies that I see you doing that. too. Oh, that is you. so you. That's your cup of tea. <laughs> I appreciate it. Yeah, I think that'd be awesome to influence how other companies do content marketing. What do you think people want to know most about you? Um, 
Especially being on the show Undercover Billionaire. Oh. Um. That's a, man. I feel like the what they probably want to know. I mean, the questions I always get is like, "Did you know?" Um, uh, I thought you were just gonna like do a a whole like detective work on Grant Cardone. Um, but the, all those questions, I mean, are pretty like standard. Like, there's a pretty easy answer for all those questions. Um, but I think what they should ask is more like, um, well, okay. Well, I think what is most useful is what I struggle with the most, which is like probably balance, right? So like Matt and you are really good at like, okay, like this is when you clock out and this is when you like focus on family. This is when you focus on yourself. And definitely like dur during Undercover Billionaire, I think like there was a moment where I wasn't eating. Like I was like, I like dropped like 10 pounds, I think. And I'm already like 190 or yeah, like, you're you know, I was, 190? No, one, 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 118. 109. Oh, yeah, okay. 118, like 110 or something. So like dropping 10 pounds on top of that, not working out, not doing anything for myself, like really like just kind of like consumed by work. I think those are all things that um, like highly successful people struggle with. And I think it's something that you and Matt do really, really well, which is trying to figure out what's that balance and what are your priorities. Mm -hmm. And those priorities always include your family and yourself. Mm -hmm. And that's what I struggle with. So you're working on that balance. I am. So balance seems like to be like the theme for me right now, because I like I'm just so like, again, when it comes down to having a full cup, right, that that has pros and has cons and having a full mm -hmm. cup sometimes means like all my energy goes into one thing, even if that means I neglect everything else. Mm, you do need to work on that. Maybe it's a, <laughs> uh, we, we start working on your calendar and what that looks like, because it is important to have a balance and granted things change. Like you're young right now. You can, you can put in more time, but like I used to hustle too. Like you, I used to work 16 hour days. I would coach in the morning after school, then work again. Like you just, you do all the things when you're younger because you can, but Absolutely. once you start getting a family and your life's changing, you get a spouse, like it just, that balance comes important. So I yeah. think it's okay now, but you still got to, so what do you do for self-care? <laughs> you know, my secret Santa, AKA Jenny gave me like a, a checklist that's like a self-care checklist. And yeah. I have not touched it. <laughs> I love you though. <laughs> um, and I thought it was funny because I was like, wow, she really knows me. <laughs> <laughs> I'm worried um, about you, man. I want to make sure you're taking care of you. I know. I know. I think um, I've been clocking out earlier. And then, but that it's like, it's, then it's like a whole guilt thing. Cause like, I know like there's other people in this building that are working quite late and I remember what that was like. And it's like, I want to be there with them. I want to be going through it with them. You know what I mean? But it's still, um, it's part of the day. Like what yeah. did I accomplish that day? Right. hundred percent. What did I do? Well, all right, good. Yeah. Tomorrow, this is the first thing I got to tackle. Exactly. Exactly. And I'm getting much better at that. Like there's, cause like I was working on weekends cause like, man, this just needs to get done. I was working on like oh, almost yeah. every single weekend, but it's come to a point where I think the last four weekends I haven't done any work. I don't want you ever working on a weekend. <laughs> that that I makes know. me feel horrible. Well, it just, it just feels like, I mean, like, it's like, uh, you just assume that this is a stretch, right? When you start up a, like a startup, there's a stretch of time where you just got to hustle and hustle and hustle. And it was like, I just didn't want to, like, I didn't want to sacrifice anything. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> but we're getting better at that in terms of... Um, what do you want? What do you enjoy? What do you want to do for self-care? Um, I I noticed that I got I to start doing yoga because my, like, back was starting to hurt. I felt like an old lady for, like, this last week. And I was like, man, this means that I need to start doing more exercise because I wasn't working out at all in the last few months. So, so could we start doing something together like I'll every day, to. like let's do a walk every day and then maybe like yoga once a week, start small. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. I like I'll that. go with you. We'll go for like a lunch break. <laughs> I like it. See, yeah, we're making see? progress. <laughs> self care is huge because if you don't ca take care of yourself, then what? Well, then you fall apart in everything else. Right. Yeah. Like, you, and we need you at wake up. So <laughs> please take care of yourself and please quit w working on weekends. I, I've gotten there so far, at least. I've at least stopped working on the weekends. So we can cheers to that. Cheers. <laughs> mm. Yeah. So Mia is a fun name. What were you named after? Um, oh, okay. That's a, that's a cool story. So um, yes, I love a cool <laughs> story, especially when we're in the storytelling world. We are in the storytelling world. So um, my mom wanted a name that was both American and Japanese. Um, and there's, there's many for women, not so much for males. My brother had the short of the stick, but they looked through a bunch of different options. They looked at like Hannah, um, Kiki, but then I loved the word Kiki. I, I loved, loved Kiki. Kiki. And it was actually because so you have um, a daughter, you can name her Kiki. Oh, I will. No doubt. So like my mom's favorite TV show back in the day by Ghibli was, uh, um, Kiki, Kiki's delivery service. And it was basically this like cute little witch that had like a, a black cat and we had a black cat at the time. Right. So when I was born, there was this black cat who's like my best friend. 
And so my mom wanted to name me Kiki after the show that she loved. Uh, but then my uncle, unfortunately, said it sounded too much like kinky and didn't want me to get made fun of. So she, <laughs> <laughs> so no kinky for me. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, she had landed on Mia. And in Japanese, when you write it in kanji, it means beauty of Asia and America. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Doesn't get better than that. Thank so you. Yeah. So that's what my name means. Um, I love it. What were you named what, after? What's your middle name? Uh, Lorraine. So I know it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Does it match me? So, uh, me and Lorraine Gilbertson, and Lorraine is after my um, my dad's aunt, or no, my dad's sister. Okay. So my aunt that passed away. Did you know that you and Matt have the same initials? No, is, right? Because when I hear MLS, I think of like you know real estate in the MLS listings. Oh, I'm MLG. Oh, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> How do we edit that part out? Oh, wait, we don't. We don't. It's we just don't. my blonde moment. I don't know why. No. I was thinking, we do? <laughs> <laughs> Mine's Major League Gamer. <laughs> MLS. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's what that is. Oh, mm. I love it. I yeah. love you. So you. what's a good song that describes you? Not Mama Mia, the, things, the theme song. Oh, see, I even knew you were going to ask me this question. I like looked you at my... You did? Well, because you get... Yeah, like I saw on a list of possible questions that you might ask. And I was like, I thought about that one. And then I started looking at my Spotify to try to find something that matched me. And I was like, I don't know. <laughs> I was looking and I think uh, there's one. There's like, I don't know so much about the song, but there's this lyric that's like... Um, I don't even remember the lyric now. I got nervous. <laughs> 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 I don't remember. But uh, um, oh, okay, no, actually, no, I do. So I do, I do know. So there's this song called Everything by Murs. Okay. Um, and it's basically like MERS, M E R S, M U R S. Oh, oh, yeah. And it's basically like the, the chorus basically says like, I'll take everything from your hate to your love, to your, um, like failures, to your success. It's like basically lists all these beautiful things and like ugly things about people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like, um, what I try to like live my life by is trying to accept everybody for everything that they are, even the bad parts. And sometimes that's the hard thing is like, even, um, I was giving my brother like a lecture because there was like this whole, um, Someone like slighted my grandpa, right? Uh, like long story. But anyways, my brother goes straight to anger. He's like, uh, he'll start calling them names. He'll start like attacking their appearance. Like, oh, they're fat. Oh, they're this. Oh, they're this. Mm -hmm. And to me, it's like, um, no matter how bad someone can be, no matter what um, awful things people can say, it's like you still realize that there's humanity there. Mm -hmm. And there's always circumstances that you don't understand, like reasons why people are the way that Absolutely. they are. Absolutely. Right. So then the song is more so about like um, just accepting everything about everybody. And at the end of the day, we all die and we all go to the same place. Mm -hmm. So that's what I try to live by. I love that. Thank you. And do you feel like you do that? I try to. I think like I try. I feel guilty when I don't. I really try to catch myself. Obviously, mm -hmm. it's like a it's a practice, but we're working on it. Mm. You know what? But I have a question for you. Uh, this is not your podcast. I know, but it's, it'll give me advice. Okay. <laughs> so, like, you mentioned back in the day that um, you didn't necessarily need to date. You had no, like, you were just happy in a single life. You were happy in your own skin. And, like, how do you how do you achieve that? Like, how are you just fully, like, independent? Like, I am i don't need a shoulder to lay on. Like, I'm just, I'm chilling. That's a great question. Um, I was just in a point where all my friends were getting married. I was, you know, I thought I'd be 22, married, having kids by 20 like I had the whole life thing and then that didn't work and then here I'm 23 and whatever and I was like I'm happy I'm doing what I love I was making an impact so at that time my goals were you know making an impact on young lives when I was a teacher and, and you know they were my whole thing and I honestly felt like God had a plan so why not just enjoy it? I didn't want to stress about it because some people were, will stress about not being engaged <laughs> they will. will stress about not having families you know all those things and it's just like we have so much time on earth and you know that Mr. Perfect or Mrs. Perfect or whatever will will come into your life when the timing is right. And I do feel like everything happens for a reason. So, you know, just enjoy where you're at. And sometimes when you're least expecting it, somebody comes along. I like that. And I know you're not dating right now, right? Nope. Oh, but I'm going to hook you up because <laughs> you are just a diamond. I mean, you're so rare. You, you, your personality, who you are as a person, your love for other people, your man, you're just like one of the the smartest young humans I've ever met. You're very intelligent oh. for your for your age. Thank you. But yeah. yeah. Are you, why are you worried about that you're 21 and you're not married? <laughs> no. Okay, I'm, good. Not, I'm not in a rush to get married. Good, no good, stress. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I ask because um, it's like especially when you're working this hard and when you're not going to school, when you don't have like that network of people you go to school with and then you're 
like your life is really consumed of just the people you work with and your family. And I think there comes points where I felt like, and I think there's probably a lot of successful women out there that work a lot, young females that probably like have that, you know, that desire to be with somebody, but because they're working so hard and they don't have the network, like, man, where do, where do I find somebody? Um, and I think the hardest part is actually not finding someone. It's uh, being like very okay with the fact that you don't necessarily have someone in your life because yeah. I think it comes to a point where, um, you got to be happy with yourself first yes. before you can make somebody else happy. Like you exactly. can't depend on somebody else to make up for your happiness. It comes right. within. Right. Because even if you find somebody and they make you happy, I think the problem, what I see, um, through other people is that like, you might find happiness in that relationship. But then your happiness is now being formed and like created and innovated through mm -hmm. that relationship and through what you're building with that person. Mm -hmm. And it's very you're easy to be, right. yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very easy to become dependent. And it's not, it doesn't mean that the happiness isn't real or that's not true, but that you have not developed the type of happiness that allows you to be dependent or independent mm -hmm. because you haven't like found it on your own yet. Right. Like and I think like it's a, so important yeah. for young people to find their worth mm -hmm. and really not to be dependent. Like it's okay to be in a relationship and da 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 da, but. I had always been in a relationship yeah. for, for, I mean, my whole life I had always been. And so after like my, my college boyfriend and I had broke up, we were, I was just like, who are you? And yeah. I was so glad that I was okay with finding out who I was and what does Jenny like? And cause it's like, no, I don't want to go fishing every weekend. <laughs> like I want to figure out what I yeah. like and what I enjoy. So it's so important for people to figure out who they are, what they are like, and make sure they mm -hmm. still do that along the path. So um, what, and so here's one thing I would tell you, Mia, is I feel like you need to challenge yourself into finding another network. Yeah. You know, you're not mm. in school. That's okay. But you're only going to be in school for four years and then you're going to move on. hundred percent. So get involved with something that you're passionate about, whether it's a nonprofit, whether it's with the church, maybe it's just your group of yoga people you work out. It's so important to have a group outside of your family and your work. 100%. So what are you going to do? What's like on your list that would intrigue you? Well, so I tried boxing for a bit. I know. And I think, I, good. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think I would get somewhat, probably like something like that again. I think what, what it's like, the hard thing is, is that it's all supposed to be an escape, right? It's supposed to be unrelated to work, unrelated to, mm -hmm. to trying to better yourself sometimes. I think it's more so like, well, bettering yourself in a different way, because I think mm -hmm. there's a lot of like professional development that all gets meshed together and that just becomes exhausting. Right. Um, and so. But I think, something physically and mentally. Right, right. So something more like physically mm -hmm. enduring, I think I would like to find. <laughs> we'll mm -hmm. get there. What else would you like to do? Like hiking group? Or? Oh, I do like hiking. A hiking group would be cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'll do that. I like that. You want to go fishing? <laughs> you know, I mean, <laughs> I don't mind fishing, but yeah, maybe I'll find well, a hiking And you you have that creative side, which mm. you're using, but not to your full ability. That's true. Is there something on that end that you would be willing to explore? Oh, you want to do uh, tipsy painting or what's it called? No. Uh, no? No. You don't I, like tipsy painting? I've already done all of them. <laughs> I'm good. I don't need one more ugly portrait that I've painted, but thanks for the invite. Yeah, no problem. But that's only a one-time thing. Right. And that's, that's why I say no. If it's mm -hmm. if it's something that's long-term and like, you know, I don't yeah. know. I'm going to get you involved. I appreciate you. Yeah. yeah. I, think that's, I think that's a good step because actually he's, um, we had someone come into the office the other day and we were talking about, he was like, yeah, I moved from, you know, Texas and... I don't go to school. I work now, and like I don't know how to find people, so I go to the dog park. Oh, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's a really good. I mean, does he have like, a dog? He does. <laughs> you would hope so. You would hope so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, um, but yeah, I think it's like I mm -hmm. think I noticed it when when he said that. I noticed wow, there's people in the same position, but they're doing actively trying to fix that. Mm -hmm. I think I became complacent for a little bit. There's a group called Young Professionals that I did when I mm. when I first started in the advertising world. So that would be a good one for you because it's a business like minded people who are like already in their careers. I like that. But then, too, like intramural sports, like kickball or <laughs> soft. I mean, that's where you meet people, too. It's just. That's a good point. Matt's first thing was like, hey, uh, you play kickball, right? You're a PE teacher. I'm like, uh-huh. <laughs> and he goes, wear an outfit that doesn't match. I'm like, do you know me? Like, <laughs> I always match. You do. And I couldn't. Your shoes. But I couldn't match that day, and it stressed me out. <laughs> Anyways. That's cute. I like that. I like you. I like you, too. So um, what's your favorite color? Blue? I didn't. I already know all these answers. Yeah, she does know all the answers. Because she was my secret Santa. <laughs> yeah, you also like know my favorite candy, my t-shirt size. Yep. What What are some of um? You talked about before you were hired, and it was just the beginning of COVID. Mm. You were getting over some insecurities. Yeah. 
Do you want to open up about some of those insecurities? Sure. I think, um, I mean, we talked about me being really introverted. So it came to a point where... Um, Which is still weird for me I when know. you say that. I don't see it. Yeah. I mean, I was like, I was, my nose buried in a book. You know, I went to class. I went and studied alone. I ate alone for lunch for the most part. Um, and like, I don't know. It was something about like, I think to some degree, I felt like I couldn't connect with people. You know, like I didn't care about... Um, you didn't care about things. connections. Or well, you did? I think I did. I just didn't care about necessarily what they were talking about. Like, I would find myself in conversations and they would be talking about, like, um, who dated who, who slept with who, um, you know, the types of party situations that they were in. It's like, I think I would probably enjoy some, like, the, you know, but it was like, I just, if you asked me about, like, conspiracy theories, <laughs> psychology, um, like, you like, like hmm. Yeah, talk, yeah, yeah. Talk I, I would be, I would be deep okay. in that conversation. But it's like the, small talk is like how people start the conversation, right? Small talk is how people start making connections. And I think I would just like, I didn't care for the formalities. I just want to jump in, and there's not a lot of ways to create relationships through that, just because like it throws people off. And so I was just like, even if, even like what I notice at work is like, if I find myself in front of like a business meeting. I noticed it, it baffled me how business owners would also do the small talk thing. Like, I feel like we're here for business. Let's just jump into business. Let's talk business. No, you got to build that relationship. Know, you got to get to know one another. I know, but I, I think it's impatience or patience is a virtue, right? So mm -hmm. I, I did not have patience. I just wanted to get the job done. I just wanted to work on what I had to work on. I just wanted to like, if you had a deal and we had to make a deal, let's just make it a deal. Right. No, I like yeah, that. Yeah. I like straight to business. Like, let's right? do this. Yeah, yeah. And then, so. and then we could small talk later. So if you're ever exactly. going to talk with me, do business first and... <laughs> Yeah, party yeah, yeah. After. Well, party after. Yeah, yeah. So I think my problem was I couldn't start uh, meaningful relationships because that first beginning part that everyone goes through, I was like, I don't feel like doing this right now. That felt like work. You're like, I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I don't care about the weather. Um, so there was there was that end. Um, and then I was also dating someone at the time, and um, like I think what like I was just having a lot of like so when people first meet me, um, especially if it's it has to do in a professional setting, when it has to do with like school work. Um, just like anything that has to do with problem solving, I come out very, very confident. And the confidence, unfortunately, when you meet somebody, like they see that confidence and they're attracted to that, you know? But then when you dig deeper, there's all these insecurities I have on the back end about like, um, like personally how I look or um, such as like- I You're beautiful. <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. And then I'm, I'm, like, I'm definitely like, I've grown out of a lot of those insecurities now. Good. But at the time it was a lot of like, um, just like not feeling myself, you know what I mean? And so when he started noticing that, he was like, man, you're not like the confident person that I thought you were. And that hit me like a brick, right? Then on, on top of the fact that like when COVID shuts down and you can't focus on work anymore, you now you have to focus on your broken relationship. You have to focus on all these other insecurities that you've buried with work, right? Like the fact that, man, I don't know what my hobbies are. I don't know what I enjoy. I don't know um, what I want in life. You know what I mean? And all you have to do is think about who you are when you're stuck in quarantine. Like that's all you got. Mm -hmm. Um, and so like, it was just, it was just, yeah, just like recentering and trying to figure out like, okay, how can I be happy without the stimulus of other people, without relying on a boyfriend, without relying on, um, like activities or like studying or goals. Cause you really don't have a lot of goals to achieve. No, that's a lie. I think you can set goals in quarantine. A lot of people did. They learned second languages. They learned like how to paint a new skill. Do you know how to speak Japanese? I'm learning. Aww. I'm learning. Yeah. 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 Um, have you ever found that it's been challenging, you know, being a Japanese American? Have you ever had challenges? Oh, so I didn't life? think so. I didn't think so. But when Eric first came here, he was like, you know, maybe some of the like, because I, I, again, again, I get frustrated with people in terms of, like organization, in terms of like how they carry themselves. And he was like, well, maybe it's just because you were raised in a really traditionally like Japanese household. You know, you guys have these formalities, you guys have this like work ethic and this kind of discipline that maybe like is more cultural than you think it is. And I thought about it. I was like, I never I never thought there was a difference between me and anybody else because I, I was still born here. have a half white or I have a white dad. So I'm half white. So I, I was like, I didn't notice it until Eric said it. And then I started thinking about it. I was like, oh, yeah, maybe this is more so like what was brought to me from my mom. And then on top of that, um, I think like I didn't realize how excited I got every time I saw an Asian person. <laughs> like I would see it like because in Pueblo, there's probably like a handful, like probably like five I've ever come across. Mm -hmm. Right. So if I'm like walking in a store and I see an Asian person, I'm like, oh, my gosh, I want to know why they're here. <laughs> and I think like there's there's something about finding people that look like you and probably have the same like cultural upbringing. Mm -hmm. And I think I've always kind of also like missed or maybe felt like um, deprived deprived of uh, 
Asian culture because like there's right, not because much it, here. It, it's not much here. We're highly Hispanic or right. Italian or what you know. Like it, you don't have that. So I've never thought about that. Yeah, but that's interesting. Um, I'll have to introduce you, my friend Trish, that I worked with at Lamar. <laughs> That'd be awesome. She she her dad's white. You know, he was in the Navy, and her mom was. Uh, from Taiwan, Ooh. so she's always wanted to get a tattoo in the back of her neck. Say, uh, said "Made in Taiwan." That's cute. But you should meet her. I would love to. I love that. I always yeah. have like like one of my best friends at work is half and half. Mm. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There's like there's. I'm the, attracted yeah. to you, then <laughs> Mia. Like I'm just so glad you're here. I am too. Mm. Wait, what happened? Is it? What is this? I thought you had a cut. I was I was pulling weeds last night with the kids while they were playing outside. So yeah. Gotcha. I'm glad you're okay. Thank you. Um, if you could have lunch with anybody dead or alive, who would it be? Oh man, you're asking me hard questions. We're going to wait for the awkward silence for a sec. It's okay. Some yeah. of my favorite things about Mia is when she, she's got like these little sayings and in her voice, oh, that giggle, <laughs> don't spit up the wine. She's got this giggle that, you know, Mia is in, in the room or she'll always be like, thanks. I appreciate it. But she just says it like, watch, say it. Thanks. I appreciate it. Yeah. And see that. Appreciate it. I can't say it. I'm like, I love you, Mia. You always have you. your, your little sayings and it's, it's just you. Yeah, I've got too many of them. I noticed that. Like, my mom's like, why do you say that all the time? I'm like, oh. But like, it's my jam. It changes throughout the years. Right now, this is it. <laughs> right? Exactly. Um, I think I would have lunch with... Oh, man. <laughs> Wait, you tell, me, you tell me first what I think about it. This is not your podcast. No, but the best podcast has conversation. It's two-way. Oh. I, I think I change my answer up every day. It just depends on who's inspiring me that day. And what's today? Um, Sarah Blakely. Who's that? She owns Spanx. She's got four kids. She married uh, Jesse Itzler, and I didn't hear about her until this year at 10X Growth Con. Her husband, Jesse Itzler, I'm probably saying it wrong, um, was the like the first speaker. And I was blown away by his um, speech that I started following him. And then I put together that Sarah Blakely is his wife. And so I started being stalkerish and following her. And she's just a powerhouse woman, but super down to earth. Mm. And yeah, I like that. That's my story of, like that. of the day. Okay. So, okay. You gave me enough time. I think I figured okay. out. I can't remember his name, but there was this uh, uh, video I saw on Facebook and it was about this guy who um, he was actually um, back in the height of the KKK. He actually like, he's a, he's a black man, black male who wanted to just like understand how the KKK members thought. So what he did was he called um, like a leader of the KKK in his city and he said, um, well, actually, no, he had his assistant call him. The assistant called the KKK member to schedule an interview, like a fake interview for a news station. And so the KKK member um, agreed because he was a white woman on the phone. He was like, yeah, let's let's do it. So he sits down and he walks into the hotel room where the interview was supposed to happen. And he sees obviously this black male and this, this member is kind of like, freaked out not to mention he's got two bodyguards behind him that carry guns right to protect From the, the kkk the kkk member has two bodyguards that oh. carry guns right so they walk into the room to have this conversation with um this guy and at first they wanted to walk away but you know like really he just starts the conversation by saying hi um i didn't mean to mislead you but i just want to have a conversation with you i want to understand how you think mm -hmm. um and i still want to give you like uh i won't i won't make any like statements i just i just want to understand you and so this guy very like the KKK member really was like, okay, you know what? I'll sit down. I'll have this conversation. But meanwhile, these guys are like literally holding their guns, ready to pull it on this, you know, black male. Right. So they're sitting and they're talking about it. And then there's like this sound, like the sound that nobody understands. Like it sounds like a, like a, like a, a cracking or crackling and everyone freaks out. You just feel the tension in the room rise. Like everyone's like, what's going on? Everyone's about to pull their guns, you know, and this guy's like sitting there like nervous, like sweating. He's like, I might die today. And it turns out that I guess like there was like this, uh, can of like um drinks right and it just kind of sunk in the ice and so the mm -hmm. the sound of it sinking in the ice kind of threw everyone off and like they kind of like just laughed it off and it was this moment of like understanding like in every moment there were misconceptions about what could mm -hmm. happen right they were thinking like oh the other person is about to pull a weapon on me and that's the assumption that both of them had and in that moment they just kind of laughed it off and then um just through persistence this guy just created a relationship with this kkk member so despite the fact that he has these awful ideals 
despite the fact that this KKK member has like something that stands against humanity, against justice, this male was like, you know what? I'm just going to make a friend. And I think there's something so beautiful about that because people say, well, what's the point of doing this? It's not going to make a difference. Like, I'm not going to change how much trash are, are, like there is in the oceans. I'm not going to change how many racists there are in the world. I'm not going to change the justice system, right? And so people don't take any action because they think the smallest action doesn't mean anything. Mm-hmm. But then through time, this guy makes one friendship with one KKK member who ends up leaving uh, his establishment, the KKK. You're kidding. Right. And so I think like sitting with somebody that has the empathy and like the, the patience to work through even like small movements and small steps, I think there's something to learn from that. And I just like, I just love the cadence, you know? I love that whole story. I'm so happy that you shared that. (laughs) Thank you. That's a fantastic, I've never heard that story. Yeah. Yeah. Not only that, he actually even, uh, there were these two daughters from a KKK member. The KKK KKK member went to uh, prison and what this guy does, the same male, he tells them, hey, I want to drive you to go see your father in prison because they haven't seen their father in years. And, um, no one in the KKK member or in the KKK group ever did that for those two children who also identified with the KKK, right? And they just realized, like, wow, there's this gesture of kindness to just drive us all the way across the state to go see our father in prison. And then that kind of, like, changed our perspective on, obviously, like, their beliefs. And then it's just little things like that that just, like, I think they're just so beautiful, you know? Absolutely. Yeah. We just need to show more kindness and grace. Agreed. doesn't matter anything. Just be kind. Agreed. Right? Yeah. Just th- this world would just be way better. It'd be better off if... You know, especially in a time now, I feel like we are so divided and if I'll just show some kindness, like we wouldn't be so divided, I feel like. Agreed. And it's like you can't you can't make the argument that kindness is warranted by kindness, because I think the moment like it, like it's it's cyclical. Right. Mm-hmm. So if uh, people realize that you can have hatred, you can have someone that's God awful, but then still showing them kindness to have that power. That's like real power. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Um, so I don't know if it's like to, to state like there should be more kindness in the world is almost to say, no, I will meet kindness where hate is. And like, that's, mm, that's, that's powerful. Yeah. Uh, do you have a favorite quote that you live by? Oh, um, I feel like you just like quoted something. And I was like, oh, she's probably got some really good quotes. Oh, <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't, I don't think so. I think I've, uh, at the moment, again, it comes through phases and the phase right now is obviously, um, taking more risks than I ever have in the past. Mm-hmm. Um, being being willing to st- step in a in a place where I don't know what's going on, I don't know what the future has in store, because like who knows what's gonna happen with like, with wake up? Because like the way Matt operates is there's always something new, there's always like a change in the train like the train tracks. You should be married to. Him. Oh, I have no doubt. <laughs> <laughs> Every time he's like, hey, I've got a new LLC, you're like, say what now? <laughs> yeah, no. Um, I think I, it's still what my dad said, which is just um, it's okay. Like I'd rather deal with failure than regret. And so mm-hmm. when I'm like, should I take this jump? Should I take this risk? Like, well, I don't mind if I fail, but I do mind if I regret it. So well, good. Yeah. Well, I love you, Mia. I love you too. And I'm just I'm grateful to have you in my life. You've just been a blessing this last year. What's something that nobody knows about you? Mm. Ben's gonna have to do some awkward silence cuts for me. <laughs> You'd be like, oh, silence. Oh, silence. <laughs> um You have to go first. <laughs> you to, I, I need I'm time. not sure why she keeps doing this I game that I have to, to go first. <laughs> I need time to think. What's something I don't know about you? Ugh. You okay? So you know I was a ballerina. I just found that out, though. Yeah. Uh, you. Which your little dance moves that it all makes sense where it comes from now. Right. Right. Well, the coffee grinder is the only like hip hop dance move I know. But. <laughs> Um, I got two dogs. Um, I want a tattoo that you don't know that about me. You do? I do. What do you want it of? So I want to have, um, these rings on my arm, like up in the shoulder area so it can be covered by, uh, you know, sleeves. Right. But I want like a, a ring for every milestone in my life. Right. So it's like, uh, and the goal would obviously be for these rings to go all the way down my arm because I have enough milestones that I hit. 
so that like it's like a it's like a it's more like a, a sign of success the further down my arm it goes mm. <laughs> and so hopefully by the time that it hits the point where it would not cover be covered by sleeves anymore i'm successful enough to where it won't matter <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah 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 that would be the goal but so like for example um i imagine for wake up there would be a ring where there's like a sun on the inside so the the ring mm. ends with like a symbol that signifies what that milestone milestone is for so, so if i keep you for wake up you'll never leave us <laughs> well correct but there could be other like not only okay. business okay. Uh, milestones right. but like, like even for News, it'll be Z's or an alarm clock. Yeah, something like that. Or like, I mean, um, like for the the awful story of I don't know if you never heard the story of me in the cigar, right? In this last trip, you did hear that story. No, I didn't. I mean, no, I didn't hear it. You want to share about it? <laughs> Wait, did you? Did I tell you? You did tell me. About okay, it. okay. Well, you should tell everybody about that story. Uh, that's not okay. So, I mean, to me, like, I don't know if I would get this because it, it might be a smaller mi- milestone, but I think milestones are also things that you remember, things that like are worth remembering. So in this scenario, I'm not super proud to share this one, but um, we had our first national client that we flew out to, mm-hmm. right? In and Miami. In right. Miami. Well, Fort Myers. Yeah, but uh, there, that's a big moment when um, your work pays for you to travel, especially for a young professional. Like, that's, that's, a, that's a big move. And so, and this is a client that I think exemplifies what we need to do in the future for how we format Wake Up. So, like, this mm-hmm. was just a big moment. It was about figuring out, okay, really, what is Wake Up? What can we offer? What's something that's scalable? And so I'm super excited about this, this trip. And um, the clients are just like, they're a lot like Matt and Jenny, where business isn't just about business, it's about family. And when you enter their ecosystem, you are now part of that family. And so uh, they took us to lunch every single day. They took us to dinner every single night. The last night, um, they wanted to take us to a cigar bar. <laughs> and I'm thinking, like, we walk in, and at first I'm thinking, like, I wonder if my asthma is going to be okay with all this, like, secondhand smoke, because I never smoked before. And I'm like, my asthma is doing pretty well. He offers me a cigar. I'm like, and it's a Cuban cigar. He pulls out a whole pack of Cuban cigars. And I'm thinking like, I feel so bad because like those are expensive. He's like, they're straight from Cuba. You know, like I've got a drawer of them. And uh, no one else, like none of the team is like smoking cigars. And they took us to a cigar bar. I'm like, how <laughs> awkward is it that we're just, like, we're in a VIP section of this nice like cigar bar in Fort Myers and no one else is smoking other than like him. Not even his wife. And I'm like, okay, well. You're like, I'm going to build this relationship <laughs> up. I'm on my right. team for the team. Right. Well, well, at first I said, no, he offers one. I'm like, no, I got asthma. He felt so bad. He's like, you have asthma? And I brought you to Cigar Bar? And then he started like sweating. And I noticed he felt really bad. I'm like, no, 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 you're okay. You're okay. You're okay. I swear. I got my inhaler. And then when I said I got my inhaler, he got even more nervous. He's like, you have an inhaler? Is that bad? I'm like, yeah, I got an inhaler. But um, then I sit by the wife and I'm talking to the wife. She's like, oh my gosh, there's this cigar that's like uh, chocolate and uh coffee you know and it Mm. it tastes so good and i'm thinking well no one else is drinking it's a bonding moment you know we're in a vip section like this is the baddest ass place to have a cigar so i'm like okay yeah i'll do it um so he brings a cigar and i start smoking it it tastes so good it does actually Uh, but no one necessarily like told me how to smoke a cigar like i didn't know you're not supposed to fully inhale uh, and I fully inhaled. It didn't necessarily hurt, but it was like, okay, this doesn't feel right. And then I watched everyone else. Okay, like they're just puffing. They're puffing. So eventually, like halfway through, I, I figure out how to smoke a cigar. And uh, then we, I like, like I put the cigar down and they look at me and they're all surprised. They're like, it's like gone. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, like, I mean, like, I'm not, I'm not stressing about it. Like, I didn't think, like, I didn't know that there were, like, I didn't know there were bodily effects of cigars. Okay. So mm-hmm. I put the cigar down. And I go to the bathroom, I'm like, wow, I feel kind of woozy. <laughs> but I'm like, I don't feel sick. I just feel woozy. I just feel like, like you know, I had high. I come back. I'm like, I'm sure this is fine. But then I start sweating a little bit. I'm like, okay, I'm sure this is fine. <laughs> <laughs> and the cigar is like literally like a, a like a, just a butt now. It's, it's small. It's short. Um, and it was like, it was like this big. All right. It was like a, it was like this big. It was like, it was a big ass cigar. So then, um, okay, they're like, okay, we're going to take you to this really nice restaurant now. Okay, so then we're in a chauffeur's car. Like, there's a chauffeur in this car, and I'm sitting in the middle. All right, so there's two people on each side, and I'm like sweating. Car sick? No, I don't know, because I was I was in the middle, so I could see the front of the road. But I'm like, I still have this head high. And I start sweating and sweating and sweating. I feel my head getting hot. And I'm like, this is not going to end well, <laughs> not at all. And I'm like, I'm in my client's car with a chauffeur. They're taking us to a nice restaurant. I'm in the middle seat. What do I do? There's no trash bags that I can see in my line of sight, at least. And then I have a purse, and I've never, I, you've never seen me with no, a purse, right? You never but have I, your, I, your I never ID have a purse. You? No, I never have anything on me. But I was like, this time I had a purse, and it was a little black purse I got from like Walmart, okay? And uh, I'm like taking stuff out, and no one's noticing it, like taking everything out. Let's get like, my inhaler, check. Uh, <laughs> wallet, check. Uh, eyeliner, check. It's all, it's all out of the bag, right? And, um, I just like very quietly, like it's like, I, I already threw up once and I swallowed it. 
<laughs> and I threw up a se- and, and the second time it came up, I'm like holding it in my mouth. And I'm like literally holding my purse and my mouth is like like wide, like a chipmunk, right? And I'm holding it and no one can tell because it's dark in the car. Everyone else is just having a time and like jamming to music and like talking and I'm just sitting there with my mouth open like chipmunks. Like it's <laughs> massive. And I'm thinking, okay, do I do I spit it out? Do I swallow it? Do I spit it out? Do I swallow it? <laughs> I'm going back and forth. And I'm like, okay, I can't, I can't, this is too much. So then I uh, spit it into my purse. (laughs) (laughs) My purse is like full. (laughs) And uh, it was funny because J-Rod was sitting right next to me and he's the only one that just kind of noticed. But he thought, he was just like, what on earth is going on over there? (laughs) He's like, why is she breathing out of her purse? (laughs) So um, I'm like holding my purse. No one else notices. J-Rod kept quiet because he's a homie. Um, he didn't say anything, and then I just feel it seeking, like seeping through the purse and into my hand. Oh no! <laughs> and I'm like, what do I do? So Jared's I'm, like <laughs> throwing it out the window. <laughs> no, J Rod d- didn't even. He just he just tried to ignore me because he knew I was had too much pride to say anything. So I'm like holding my purse, and then um, in the front, our client is like, "Hey, Mia, there's this awesome video. I want everyone to watch it. Can you hold the, the phone?" So now I'm like holding my purse with one hand, holding the phone up for everybody else. Everyone else is watching behind me. All eyes are kind of in my direction. I'm thinking, okay, I gotta throw up again. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I'm like, hey, J-Rod, can you, can you hold it for everybody else? So he holds it, and, like, Tyler notices. He's like, why, why don't you just do that? And so he's paying attention to me now. And then I, the, another round comes for the purse. <laughs> All right, so now the purse is, like, super heavy. And so I'm thinking, okay, um, I asked the chauffeur. I'm like, hey, I don't suppose you've got, like, a trash bag. I just got something I got to throw away. I'm like, I'm very, like, very calm about it, like, very <laughs> even tone. I made sure my voice is, like, perfectly even, flat. And then he's like, um, no, 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 I got napkins, though. So then I pull the napkins, and I'm holding the napkins, <laughs> hoping that it'll, like, stop the, the seeping, right? And it's not. It's going through the napkins. So I'm like, okay, listen. I pulled to Anthony. I'm like, hey, Anthony, I'm really sorry, our client. And I was like, uh, I apologize, but, like, I kind of had to throw up. I've got my purse. He's like, no, 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 don't, don't, don't uh, throw up in your purse. I was like, no, 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 I already did. <laughs> <laughs> it's already gone. It's already done. And nobody heard you in the car. Oh, no, I'm, I was super sly. <laughs> no one noticed except for J-Rod. But um, he was like, he, he felt so bad. He's like, okay, we're going to pull over. We pulled over. And, like, they just saw me, like, pour it out of my purse. I should have just thrown it away. But they saw it just, like, chunk out. Anyways, I dropped it in the trash. And then uh, they got me some water. And, like, the uh, chauffeur was like, no more cigar for you. <laughs> Whose idea was it to go to a cigar bar? And then, it, <laughs> and I'm thinking like, this is supposed. I'm supposed to be the professional here. I'm supposed to be like the boss, you know? Like, but it was good that you felt comfortable enough to just let low, because that's how yeah. relations are built through fun, crazy stories <laughs> like that. Because they'll never let you live it down. Oh, I agree. They're gonna give that to me next time too. And then, um, so we drive to the this nice rest- restaurant, and it gets worse. Like you would think that this is the worst part of the story, right? But then it just keeps <laughs> oh, going. Wait, there's more. You would think, right? And so uh, I'm feeling right. They gave me water. And I'm getting uh, pep talked by the chauffeur that's like, no more cigars. You know, like, you don't know how to smoke a cigar. I'm like, okay, great. Sig. We finally get there. Um, and we sit down. It's this really nice, like, it's like a, it looks like a five-star restaurant. Like, way nicer than what we have in Pueblo. And I'm like, I don't think I've ever, like, eaten somewhere, like, this nice before. And so we're sitting there. And uh, I'm like, man, I got to throw up again. God dang. <laughs> but first I go to the bathroom. All right. So I'm hanging out in the bathroom. I come back and I feel pretty good. And uh, Aunt, one of our clients is gone. It turns out he's like he plays this game where he tries to guess the uh, um, he tries to guess the occupation of people in the room. Mm. Okay, so then he found somebody out in the front, and uh, that's a cool game. Yeah, yeah. So now he's out. Like everyone has their bets of like what this person does, right? And so Anthony went out just to have a conversation and seek out what this guy's occupation is. And I'm back trying to figure out what's going on because everyone's talking about like occupations. I'm like, what's going on? And they tell me, and then I'm like, oh man, well. Thanks for telling me that. I got to go throw up again (laughs) because I'm still not feeling well. I'm still sweating. So then now I'm like, I don't really want to go to the bathroom because I don't want to make it smell like I'm going to go out to the like outside. And the problem is, is that so our table is right next to the window. So can everyone can see us in the window? (laughs) Then the guy that Anthony is now talking to is also right outside the window. (laughs) So everyone is in the right vicinity to see me. So then there's like a there's a bush and then there's like a Lamborghini, like this really nice car. (laughs) And so I duck between the Lamborghini so no one from the street can see me and the, the bushes so no one else eating can see me. And so I'm ducked and I'm like throwing up. And then uh, it wouldn't be, it wasn't inconspicuous anymore because the rest of the team came out just to see me. Like, you know, like Jared held my hair back. Were they filming it? No, no. They was really sweet. Actually, so like, that's J-Rod, love. They love was you. love. J-Rod held my hair back and Aww. like Tyler was just hanging out behind me. But like everyone obviously knew what was going on. And then the more embarrassing part comes when I come back inside. Wait, there's more? Yeah. But the problem is, is that the guy that Anthony was talking to, it was his Lamborghini. Because I see this guy get up and walk into his Lamborghini. And I'm thinking, well, I just like threw up in, in front of like the client's 
was because it turns out too that this guy um, is also in the same industry as oh. our client. So now it became a professional business relationship. And I just threw up inside of this guy's, like, or not inside, next to this guy's car. And I just felt like, wow, this is the stupidest moment of my life. But it was it was a moment that I feel like is worth remembering. Because again, like I, every in high so school. So would you get a cigar? Honestly, I wouldn't be. <laughs> I mean, or like Java, because Java was the brand. And Java is probably a little bit more like and nicer looking than like a flat cigar. But Oh, now she knows her cigars, <laughs> y'all. Well, I just know the one that I threw up for. And that <laughs> but, is funny. Yeah. So I, and I that know. is what makes her an influential woman. Because you know what? <laughs> We, we all have stories, we right? Do. And sometimes people don't share them. And I'm proud of you for sharing your story. It's Thank hilarious. You. It was so funny. It was. I was still laughing in the moment, but yeah, it's more funny now. <laughs> and are our clients still laughing about it? I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. They're gonna be like, "Hey, we would love for the team to come back, but like Mia, like she can stay home." <laughs> so, are you gonna have a cigar in the near future? Uh, I don't think so. No, nope. I think I'm okay. <laughs> live and learn, right? Yeah, you live and you learn. Yeah, but moments like that, like I think I missed out on a lot of those moments in college too, because like again, like I didn't go to any parties, I didn't have any big moments, I didn't have any blackouts, didn't have any of that bad stuff. Um, which I kind of like. I don't know if I regret, but I don't regret it because I'm having moments now. <laughs> Probably not in the ideal scenario, but there's stuff that I'm gonna like worth remembering that I would love to have branded on my arm forever. <laughs> oh, I love so, it. Yeah, I love it. Or a little Lamborghini car. Yeah, I yeah like it has to be a cigar. I know. Yeah. Uh, well, what does the word influential mean to you? Mm. I think you can be influential in a good and bad way. Um, you know, like Hitler was influential. You know what I mean? Like there's people that can change the world for better, for worse. I think um, when I think of influential woman, um, I imagine in the good way, in a good mm -hmm. way. I imagine a woman that is vulnerable and, you know, very willing to share her expertise and her failures and her successes um, in a very humble way and grounded way. And I imagine, again, um, when it comes to any leadership, any good influential leadership is someone that, again, uh, doesn't have all the answers or even if they do, don't provide them. Uh, Dave, our life coach, does really well at that mm -hmm. in terms of just asking a lot of questions and allowing other people to become the leaders that they're meant to be. Because if you're too authoritarian in your leadership, it hinders everyone else from their growth. And I think someone that can allow other people to be bigger than them and better than them, mm -hmm. that's influential or good in a good way. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, Mia, I've, I've seen you grow. <laughs> I've seen you influence others on our team and around the world. Like other people are looking up to you. Um, and I'm just proud to call you a friend. And so you are an influential woman. And I appreciate you being here on my podcast today. Thank you so much for having me. Yay. I love you too. I love you. Cheers. Anything else you want to add? Uh, you're coming to lunch next week. Uh, uh huh. Going to lunch. Or dinner. Dinner with my family. I mean. Oh, yes. I'm <laughs> yes, I get the noodles. <laughs> yes. I'm excited. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know exactly what noodles we're going to make. All right. So, yep. Okay. Look, I got Japanese noodles out of this. Yay for me. Yes, sir. <laughs>